Hello, it's Mr. Omara here. Um, given that we're pressed for time in terms of the language analysis, I thought I'd jump in and try and give you a bit of information for those of you who perhaps have missed stuff in class or perhaps are trying to get ahead of things in class. So I want to tell you some stuff that you need to know about language analysis. There's about six short videos on this. With language analysis, the task is always basically the same in terms of VCE. What we're looking at, the question is always, how does the writer use language to persuade the reader? So the key terms in there is writer, so we're talking about what a writer particularly does, about the particular techniques that they use, and what they do, they use them to persuade the reader. So writer, persuade and reader are the key terms. It's about what this person does to persuade, which is to change the mind of this person here. So there are particular things that you do to achieve this and this is the task is asking you to talk about it and you talk about it in a standard essay format. So there's an introduction and conclusion and your body paragraphs are to get across your major ideas. The first thing that you want to be aware of is who stuff is by. You want to identify who the writer is because we're talking about what it is that they're doing. So one thing that you can do is look at the byline. The convention is that normally the name in the newspaper, the name of the writer, is up under the headline. So, you know, if it was by me, it would say, you know, English is really easy as the headline by Mark O'Mara. So the byline is just a line saying who it's by. Sometimes it's listed at the end of the article along with a little bit of information about them. So there might be an opinion piece by me and it might say Mark O'Mara is an English teacher at Western Heights Geelong. So that's the first thing. You look to see who wrote it. Sometimes the, there is no byline for an editorial. It doesn't say who it's by at the top or the bottom. When you've got an editorial, which will be labelled as editorial, it, it'll, it is always written by the editor. Now, the editor is the most senior journalist on a newspaper. They're not a person who goes through picking up typos. They're not even somebody who goes through improving how things read, although editors do those jobs. But the editor is the senior journalist, the one who speaks for the newspaper or the publication. The next thing you want to establish is what is the issue that your particular article is talking about? Everything's about something. When we did your um, your own oral presentations, I talked to you about having a single message. Well, most articles, most of these texts, in fact, I would say all of them will be about a particular issue. And you'll have to read through it to get a sense of what that issue is. Once you know what the issue is, you're looking for the contention. Because if you're looking to persuade somebody, you're looking to persuade them of a particular thing. It isn't just about telling them about the issue, it's about getting them to believe what you want them to believe about it, and that's called your contention. I'll give you an example of this. In this one, Mayor McBuckle decides to build an expensive, unnecessary bridge. Now, the issue, I hope, is fairly obvious, so pause and think about it if you need to. Okay, so we're back from your pausing with any luck. So the issue here is that Mayor McBuckle is getting a bridge built. That's your issue. And so you might, when you're writing about it, or in fact you should, talk about how this issue has come up. In this particular case, there might have been a need for a bridge, the old one might have fallen down and so forth. But the contention here is not that there's going to be a bridge built. That's fact. Contention is that we shouldn't have this bridge. And you can see this because it's sort of painting it in bad terms. It's an expensive, unnecessary bridge. So this is how we know that the writer thinks that we shouldn't do it. He would be using different words. He or she would be using different words. Then you need to go through and you say what type of text it is. Now, particularly in modern VCE exams, they have all types of text. Um, they have speeches. They have blog posts. I think last year's Year 12 exam had a blog post with some... Um, some comments after it, uh, and traditionally we've had articles and editorials. Now, an editorial is just an article that is written by the editor, so or the editor, I should say. So they're the things that you should identify first up, and you definitely should read the article start to finish. Don't even try to answer these questions until you've actually fully read the article. And I'm going to come back shortly in another video and talk to you about contention.